Alrighty guys, so what I want to do is I want to start building some characters, help you guys out. Um, for anyone who is still kind of unaware or unsure on how to build certain characters, I'll be doing this for like the Iron Midnight Suns and basically going forward. Um, so we're going to start things off with the Season 1 characters. We're going to start things off with Mimosa, because she is the healer. And out of the Season 1 character, she's kind of my favourite, I'm going to be honest. Um, and so obviously she is kind of like one of the easiest characters to build, I would say. Of course, she is playing that healing role, so key thing about this character in particular is survivability you want her to be alive you want her to absorb as much damage as possible because of course she's providing your team that healing as well as being able to apply that resurrection of course so she's basically the foundation if she drops if she's gone then your whole team will slowly crumble and that's exactly what you don't want I'm on the JP side of things of course since that's where all my gears are at and I'm still farming stuff out for the global side of things which is completely fine. I mean accessories is kind of self-explanatory of course you want to go more on the route of healing defense that's going to be kind of like the main substats on what you're aiming for I mean I haven't really done anything much here but that's where you would be kind of looking towards when it comes to the substats defense HP um, I guess accuracy, but I'll say more for attack than accuracy. That's how I would say on how the substats should be working. So when it comes to gear sets, how do you want to build your Mimosa? Well, as I've mentioned, you need her to stay alive as much as possible. She's there to eat hits. So if you really want to kind of cap out on the HP side of things, that's an option that will make her a, a much more of a difficult character to take down and that's exactly what you want um, by the way i'm using the gold gear sets if you want to opt out to use the non-gold gear sets for hp you can do so but at a later stage or end stage should i say it's going to be the gold variant of these gears of course so of course by maxing out a full-on gold uh, hp gear uh, that will give me an additional recover 10% hp at the start of every turn and then from that point on i could then go about adding in uh, her defense so in this case I think what I would opt out for because I do want to make her a little bit of tanky I think the best option would be to where is it where's the okay I'm gonna have to I'll just take off faster for right now since I'm not using it on him uh, it would be the defense and then it'll leave that little square open and then if I had an, a legendary version of it then I'll sneak that in there yeah, okay we'll use this because this one has magic attack okay so this is just an idea so this is one of the good ones of course you know a lot of HP is being given of course by having two of the defense sets of course that's given her a defense plus 30 percent so this right here again every turn well whenever she starts to turn she gets 10 percent HP and then you've got a plus 30 percent on, on her defense this is power this is strong this will keep her alive <laughs> and uh She'll be able to absorb a lot of damage, I will say that. Now, if you want to make it so that it's a 2-2 situation, you can do so. So, of course, if you want to opt out on just having two greens, two defense, and then if you want to also maximize more on the defensive side of things, this is also an option um, if you wanted to. So that will now drop so that having two gold HPs will give her a total of plus 7% on the HP. You're still keeping the 30% on the defense, but by having the additional defense gear set being applied, so again, this will be more in favor of boosting her defense up like that, and then again, we'll also buff up the magic attack right here. Now, having the non-gold gear set defense, having two of those will give your defense a plus 250. Um, so the additional bonus on what you get in there, I mean, it's nothing too crazy. Um, but you've got to also keep in mind with the gear sets and what they're also providing. That's also an option. I know some people will also opt out by keeping the gold HP, gold uh, defense, and then also applying damage. You can do that. But the thing about Mimosa is she's not really there for damage. So like having the bonus two gear sets for uh, attack. I mean, yeah, the damage is going up, but it's it's... For me personally, it's not really that necessary. It's not really that necessary. I would honestly opt out of getting a full HP gear set. So you're maximizing, um, obviously, the HP restoring that she does to herself. And then on top of that, having minimum two gold defense gear stats. Because that plus 30% defense, it's, it's, in my opinion, heavily needed. So that's kind of like where you want to kind of build the Mimosa at. Um, Again, like I said, as you're starting global, you're going to resort to using the uh, earlier stages of these gear sets, of course. Um, and if you wanted to know what 
the uh, early. Oh my god, I, yeah, they, they, I mean, yeah, I don't really care about the early stages on JP, but pretty much if you get a full gear set on the um, regular HP gear uh, set, then you're pretty much getting a plus HP of 10%, which is nice. And for, and for global uh, early stages, that's going to be extremely clutch to have. So, still beneficial, still good to have, but you guys can see the difference between how the gold versions of these HP gear sets as well as defense sets are just higher level so just to give you guys an idea but that's pretty much how we're looking at the gear sets on how you want to build the Mimosa again it's more in line of survivability and being able to tank more so once again I would honestly opt out of using full HP and then two defense if you want to opt out using HP HP defense defense and the non gold gear for defense that's also an option I think those two are going to be your best way to go about on having the best build for Mimosa in survivability and just being a tank as well as that good support healer. Now moving along to the talent. So talent is going to be fairly simple and quick. So again, she's not much of an attacker, so you don't really need to concern yourself much about this. But when it comes to the attacking side of things, realistically, you want the magic attack because that's how, well, that's her attack essentially, right? Uh, as well as beside that, grants a 2.5 increase crit rate at the start of the wave stacks up to five times realistically the attack talent tree isn't exactly that heavily needed i'll say but just to make sure that you've got it out of the way uh these two are going to be your best options to have because of course the talent tree does work in a pair and the one next to the magic attack attacks after granting a 10 percent increased damage dealt buff upon attacking a boss she's not exactly needed as a boss attacker she's more of a support character anyway so that would be your best option for the attacking side of things when it comes to defense again defense plus 20 percent and then grants defense plus four and crit resistance plus two percent at the start of the wave stacks up to five times having these two is more than enough um, you've got max hp so that's also an option i mean i would still resort to the plus 20 percent of course because that will then stack up all together uh, upon attacking, yeah, that's something for the bosses, which most of us need. Crit resistance, yeah, crit resistance, something you don't really need right now. Grants debuff immunity for one turn if HP is equal to or low. Yeah, that's not again. Yeah, so I would honestly just opt out, play it safe by uh, obtaining these two. If you want to, yes, the max HP is also an option, but I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's, there's nothing HP scaling off the character, so you don't really need to concern yourself about that. Just concern yourself about absorbing damage. Uh, when it comes to the support play, there's two options. So obviously damage resistance plus uh, 10% yes you can have fun with this one because you can either opt out for granting a special point plus one buff upon having less than two SP so basically when you use your ultimate you're gonna be below the mark so that way you're gaining that plus one back or you can have a 20% chance to reduce the cooldown on your skill too which is the AOE healing so it really is on how you, you know how you use your mimosa or you know depending on what you want obviously with the plus one sp that's a guarantee right the minute you use the ultimate minute you resurrect the enemy as, oh, sorry ally and healing um then you'll get that plus one which means it, it's helping you get your ultimate quicker and obviously with mimosa that's exactly what you want right you want your ultimate since that's the key thing or what makes the character um skill two is not bad but again it's just helping you out to get your aoe healing back Keep in mind, it's a 20% chance. So I would honestly opt out to get in that SP plus one, right? Because I want my ultimate as soon as possible. And then of course, when it comes to skill pages, fairly simple. I mean, the number one priority is if you have Mimosa skill page, use her skill page. <laughs> Stayed in the obvious, because of course she does get the Grey more passive and the bonus on buffing up her um, second skill. So there's that. But I mean, of course, uh, not everyone or majority won't have the skill page itself. So, of course, we're all looking out for skill pages to opt out to. And um, SSR wise, let's have a look. What have we got? What do we have as an option? Is this has a 35% chance of HP recovery equal to 46% of your max HP at the start of your turn? Yeah, I mean, you can opt out. I mean, I wouldn't say that is kind of priority. Uh, Breath of the Wind is something I would say which is more nice. So, grants immunity to status changes to yourself for one turn at the start of each wave. Grants HP recovery equal to 7% of your HP to yourself upon being affected by stats change. Uh, this isn't. This is actually a pretty nice uh, SSR. Great more to have if you want to add that on. You can do so. I'll take that more over than which one did I just look at? Um, Crystal Orb of the Abyss, of course. There is another SSR one which you can opt out to. Is it Moonlight Necklace? Yeah, applies 40 to 80% increased defense and 6 to 10% increased healing to yourself. Uh, yeah, healing to yourself, fair enough. I mean, I don't know if that also gets 
buffed up from if you apply the gear set? That's something I actually haven't tested. I don't think that is the case. Um, but if she does heal, of course she does AoE healing, that's also going to benefit you. But more importantly, it's the defense increase that you're also applying to yourself on top of with obviously the bonus stat that you get from the gear sets along with the talent, which is a plus 20%. So it all kind of adds up very nicely. So Moonlit ne uh, Necklace is also pretty nice to have. I think out of the SSRs, it would genuinely be Mimosa, Breath of the Wind, and or Moonlight Necklace. Um, and then of course when it comes to just in general for healers, when it comes to SSRs, or sorry no, SSRs my bad, um, Charmy applies 7 to 15% increased max HP to yourself. I actually have got that currently on my global one. That's what I've got to work with. Charmy is going to be one of the better ones of the SSRs to go with, honestly. Um, obviously you've got this Mimosa one, but it's more in line with uh, giving you a increased magic attack to yourself for one turn upon using skill two. Yeah, um, I mean, I personally wouldn't use it, nor would I recommend it. Um, I understand that it's, the, it's, it's a Mimosa skill page, so I know why some people might be being like, is this good enough? Damage wise, it's fine, but like I said, I don't like going too much investing into it. I mean, you can if you want to. Again, if you want to get some damage going on with a Mimosa, that's fine, but the way I tend to build my healers is I want them to tank eat survive a lot of course and then i guess the remaining two uh gray Moors is going to be more in line with just increased hp recovery and i'm pretty sure sister lily is all the same yeah increased hp recovery um so they're, they're they're an option i would honestly say the sr charmy is going to be the better option and then with like the universal gray Moors, i mean the backlight of leaf isn't too bad so it grants immunity to stun to yourself for one turn at the start of the battle and applies a 6 to 12 percent hp recovery to yourself upon being stunned um are there any i mean you got mars so this is more on the pvp basis of course um, as well as depending on certain situations in PvE, that's also something. I mean, that wouldn't be too terrible. Turn 1, of course, so that's also an option. And then, of course, upon taking a crit, you've got 30% chance to, uh, to grant yourself a 30 to 60% increase in defense. But, I mean, well, she should be, if, if built up right, she should be able to absorb that crit damage. So getting that additional increased defense just kind of helps her out in the long run. So, yeah, Universal Grey Moors are kind of 50-50. I mean, I would personally still, again, opt out to the ones that if you have been SR versions. If you have the luxury of having the SSR versions, as aforementioned, being obviously Memorial the Skill Page, Breath of the Wind, um, Moonlight Nexus, etc. And it gets Crystal Orb, I'll throw that in there. Um, those are also uh, options to take. Anyway, guys, I think I'll leave it there. So, yeah, hopefully this helps you out and gives you guys a decent template on how to uh, make sure that your Mimosa is there being the foundation of your team so thank you for watching stay awesome i do appreciate the love and support that you guys have shown with the channel so uh yeah i don't, I don't say it enough so i need to start saying it more thank you